Apple just announced a ton of new iOS 19 features, including some accessibility ones that will be useful to basically everybody. Let's talk about it. Real quick, if you want to keep up to date with the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. For the last several years, Apple has been highlighting upcoming accessibility features to launch later in the year in mid-May. This year, these features will be part of iOS 19, as well as Apple's other new platforms such as watchOS 12, VisionOS 3, tvOS 19, macOS 16. While many may shrug off these features as accessibility features that they currently don't have to use, I'm here to tell you why they're wrong. Not only are some of these features incredibly cool and amazing for those that need them, some are even useful for everyone. Plus, they may lead to more widely used features in the future. First, Apple's motion cues are coming to the Mac. I put this first because I know how prevalent motion sickness can be. My other half was in the car just the other day working on her laptop and the hills made her feel so nauseous she had to stop. But motion cues on iPhone, a feature that's currently available, helped. Many people get motion sickness because their inner ear tells the body that they're moving. But when they look at a stationary screen, your brain can't reconcile the two different signals it's receiving. And boom, motion sickness. Apple's solution works by covering the screen in small dots that move, mimicking the motion of the car. So when you're looking at your phone's screen, it also appears to be moving, sending two versions of the same signal to your brain and avoiding the motion sickness. This fall, those same on-screen dots will be coming to the Mac. I'm very excited about this, and it's such a little thing that I had no idea that there was an actual solution to. Next, Apple's adding accessibility nutrition labels to the App Store. This is very similar to the privacy nutrition labels that Apple currently employs, like here for dark noise. It will be an easy way for anyone to look at an app and know what features it does and doesn't support, even basic things like voiceover or high contrast modes. Okay, anyone who's been in college, attended a lecture, uh, anything like that will understand the benefit of this next feature. Magnifier for the Mac. It's basically a combination of the existing magnifier feature on an iPhone and iPad and continuity camera. The idea is you will use your iPhone's camera to film content, while then zooming in and improving it on your Mac. So you're sitting in the back of the lecture hall and you can barely tell what's being written on the whiteboard or chalkboard. You turn on magnifier where you can adjust contrast, invert colors, adjust the perspective, and so much more. It's insanely cool. While this will be huge for those with low vision, I think a ton of users in general will be able to benefit from this one especially. I know I could have in college. Plus, you can save those shots and add them to your notes. Okay, two more super cool updates I want to touch on and how these things can evolve. Sound recognition. This is a feature where your iPhone and Apple Watch can notify you of certain sounds, like a smoke detector going off, or while you're driving, maybe someone is hitting their horn or a siren. Now, voice recognition will support names. Those hard of hearing or even deaf will get an alert when someone says their name. How amazing is that? You're cooking in the kitchen, your other half calls you from the other room, uh, you, you don't see them, and even if you can't hear, you get a tap on your wrist saying someone has called for you. Just so cool. Then there's an update to personal voice. When this originally launched, I told everyone they had to do this. Basically, you repeated, I think, like 150 phrases to your iPhone. It would process them overnight and create a clone of your voice. You never know when something may happen to you and literally take your voice away. Having it securely preserved so that should you ever need it, it's there is amazing. 
So if you had to start using text to speech or a speech synthesizer to communicate, you could do so with your actual voice. I tried this with the original version a couple years ago and it sounded pretty darn good. Now Apple's uh, dropping the phrases to, to only 10 and once you're done, it finishes processing in a, a minute versus overnight. It uses new on-device machine learning and AI to make it smoother and more natural sounding. I've linked the video I did on the original one here and if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend you take the time to do it. And if not now, maybe once iOS 19 ships and it's even faster and easier to do. Other features that I don't have time to get into right now, uh, there's a new accessibility reader, braille control, live captions on Apple Watch, the ability to zoom in on the world around you while using Vision Pro, and literal mind control. But that should probably be uh, a different video. While all of these features are currently billed as accessibility features, it doesn't mean that will always be the case. Take double tap on Apple Watch. Many Apple fans may be aware that this started as an accessibility feature. I did a whole video comparing the original accessibility feature to the whole full highly marketed double tap version that came to Apple Watch Series 9. It was a great use case of Apple experimenting with a feature, continuing to develop it and flush it out before making it a literal flagship feature for the new watches. Look, it's, it's just amazing what Apple is doing here. Other platforms like Android do have verbose accessibility features. You know, others aren't standing still, but no one is coming close to what Apple is doing. I mean, across the board here, from recreating your own voice in minutes to controlling your devices just by thinking about it. It's more than cool. It's next level science fiction becoming a reality that will be literally life changing for a huge array of users. Apple can't get enough praise for prioritizing features like these. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe for more Apple news and I'll see you all in the next video.